Hey Oasis, it's Michael and Janelle here, and uh, we just wanted to jump in on this, this time of prayer that we're doing as a church and share something that God has really impressed on our heart and something we've been trying to practice in our household. So I'm going to jump right in. We'll be going to the book of John, chapter 20, and in this uh, you know, kind of retelling that John is giving us, he's inviting us into this pretty cool exchange. This is happening shortly after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. Uh, Jesus has already appeared to most of the disciples, all but one in the retelling of the story, and that one is Thomas. And uh, I, I, as I'm reading this, I kind of can see it playing out before my eyes. The disciples run over to Thomas and say, hey, you know, we saw our friend. He's alive. He's well. He's not, he's not dead anymore. He's out. He's not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. And I can just see Thomas being a lot like maybe I would be. Is like, all right, settle down, guys. Maybe it was just like a Jesus lookalike, someone who maybe had the same haircut as him walking around, maybe had the same sandals. I don't know. Probably not Jesus. You know, take it easy. And, and the disciples are, no, Thomas, it's, it's really him. We saw him. And Thomas, uh, Thomas says this, this phrase that we've probably heard over and over, unless I can see the wounds where the nails were in his hand and touch them for myself, I will not believe. It's, it's the exact moment that the nickname Doubting Thomas was born. And uh, that's where we're going to pick up our story. John retells what happened after Thomas made this infamous doubting statement. And we pick up in verse 26. And this is going to be the Passion's translation. Then eight days later, Thomas and all the others were in a house together. And even though all the doors were locked, Jesus suddenly stood before them. That's a pretty awesome start to a story. Someone just kind of randomly appearing behind a locked door. But we'll kind of move on and, and get to the actual point here. Peace to you, he said. Then looking into Thomas's eyes, he said, put your fingers here in the wounds of my hands. Here, put your hand into my wounded side and see for yourself. Thomas, don't give in to your doubts any longer. Just believe. Then the word spilled out of his heart, and they're talking about Thomas, you are my Lord and you are my God. And when I look at this, I see I see an incredible moment of love and compassion coming from Thomas's friend, from Jesus, where he says, listen, I'm going to give you exactly what you need to believe. He almost mimics the words that Thomas said, unless I can put my fingers in the wounds, unless I can touch his side. Jesus echoes that back to him and says, here, this is what you need and this is what I'm going to give you. It's, it's living proof of what I accomplished on the cross and through my resurrection. See for yourself. And then Jesus never misses a moment to lead someone in truth. He, he closes off by saying, Thomas, now that you've seen me, you believe. But there are those who have never seen me with their eyes, but have believed in me with their hearts, and they will be blessed even more. And, and that's an amazing thing. There's going to be some of us, friends, family, that hear the gospel and their, their lives are radically changed. They have these encounter moments with God, and they'll believe right away. And then you'll have the stubborn knuckleheads like me that need a little bit more, that say, hey, give me some more evidence, some more proof to what you're saying so that I can believe, I want to believe, but, but show me it. If I can see it for myself, then I'll believe. And, and when I look at what's going on around us today, we don't have the physical person of Jesus standing in front of us with the wounds that we can touch. And I wonder what's the evidence that others will see of who Jesus was and what he accomplished and what he did. And the answer is us. I mean, we're, we're supposed to be that evidence walking around and, and acting like Jesus and giving hope like Jesus and bringing life and resurrection like Jesus and saying, hey, it's right here for you. Take a look. This is exactly who Jesus was. So I wonder what it would be like to, to really live out being that living proof for someone. And when I think about living proof, I think about the fact that it says that the word of God is active and living so that the scripture is God breathed. So everything that we read in the scripture, that is a part of the living proof. And like Michael said, that we are also the living proof. Um, in this time period, I have also been thinking about how back in, in Exodus that they put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts when the plague of death was coming by. And it says that when the plague saw the blood over the, the door frame, it passed over the house and then went to others. And so I liken that to what's going on here today. Um, it's definitely not as bad of a plague, but I think it's very crucial that we are praying for 
the blood of the lamb to be covering ourselves to cover this home you know our homes our families and um i truly believe that we as believers that we are to be the living proof amongst this chaos that when they start to do you know statistics and surveys i want the world to see that the believers did not get this virus. I mean, there are going to be some people that do get the virus. And, and I think that's because, you know, Satan uses his deception to bring fear into our lives. And then that's how we give access to, you know, the things of, of evil that he has in place. Um, but I believe that when we stand in the word and we focus on the truths of what he says in scripture, that we can live in this confidence, that we don't have to fear uh, this virus coming around, that we can be the light in the darkness, that, that we can provide the peace where there is chaos, that we can give um, a, a foundation of faith in, in all of this turmoil. And for those of you that follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you guys know that I've been doing um, Psalm 91, uh, one verse a day, and I read a little devotional on it. If you haven't seen it, you know, I, I welcome to you to take a look at it. But I feel like that Psalm 91, the entire chapter, is so crucial for this time period because from beginning to end, it talks about what we have with Christ. And keep in mind that that is back in the Old Testament, just like with the, the blood of the Lamb in Exodus, that's in the Old Testament. And now we have a new covenant. You know, Christ died for us on our sins and He took the place. We don't have to sacrifice lambs because He is the ultimate sacrifice. You know, in, in Psalms, you know, David would pray these prayers and that based on his good works, then God would, you know, come and, and be with him. But now we have Jesus that has covered all of our sins, past, present, and future, that we have access. He lives within us. We have access to his presence at all times. We have, you know, access to everything in heaven. And, um, you know, we are to, to walk in this confidence. And, and I just really encourage you to, to spend some time, you know, reading and meditating on the entire chapter of Psalm 91 and to turn that into a prayer and pray that over your family, over yourselves, over your home, over your property. Just declare that. And what we're going to do is is we're going to close this out in prayer. Do you have something else to say? I yeah, I think I think it's important to note that as believers, our, our goal is not to stick our heads in the sand and act like nothing is happening. Um, but what Janelle is saying is where we root our confidence, you know, and, and, and though things around us may seem as bad as they've ever been, um, we look deeper than that and say, you know, God says there's going to be troubles in the world, but take heart, he's overcome the world, you know, and, and that's, that's something that we get to carry as, as his children. And, um, you know, I love the imagery of, of, you know, in the book of Exodus with covering your doorposts. I mean, the scriptures say we're covered by the blood of the lamb. So we walk around with that protection. And um, I think just to really encourage you guys to, to challenge yourselves to say, okay, in spite of what's going on around the world, not just the sickness, but the reactions, the things that people are doing and, and the hysteria and, and just rushing around trying to make sure that we have everything in perfect place and in control, um, what would it look like for us to step back and say, you know what, God, I, I see all of this stuff, but I can trust you still. And then even more beyond that, what would it look like for people to look at us and see, oh my goodness, they, they're calm. They're confident. They know, you know, they're not worried about getting sick. They're just kind of pressing forward and, and leaning into something. What is that? Mm -hmm. And that's the living proof that we can be for others and saying, listen, my confidence doesn't become, isn't because I take a lot of vitamin C. My confidence is because Jesus already paid for my sickness, paid for my healing, paid for, for everything that I could possibly need. And Andy Stanley shared a pretty cool statement. I'm going to wrap this up so she can do the prayer. Um, it, this past week in, in his sermon, and I thought it was, it was, pretty interesting just to meditate on. And, and he said, when the story of the coronavirus is just a story that we tell, let's make sure that our stories are stories worth telling. And it's one of those things where it's like really, really like poetic the way they say it. When the story of the coronavirus is just a story that we tell, let's make sure our stories are stories worth telling. And, and I really I want to encourage you guys to think about that because when we, when we look back at this point in history, when others look back at the church in this point in history, are they going to say that, okay, they were just like everyone else? 
There was no, there, there was nothing different in them. There was no confidence. They didn't root themselves in anything. They kind of just went along with everything. And, and that's our mandate is to be that proof for those doubting Thomases or doubting Janelles or doubting Michaels that might say, listen, I'm worried. I'm worried for my family. Um, it's our duty to, to be able to tell the stories and say, listen, I have confidence because mm -hmm. I am this living proof because, and that's the stories that we hope we can tell. So let's do this prayer and just kind of, as she reads it, own it. And I'm sure you're going <laughs> to Yeah. So I, um, I took this prayer from, um, Psalm 91. So you guys can either, you know, write down what I'm saying or just go there and just have God reward it for you. Just write it down, but let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your salvation, which makes us a child of God. Thank you for the intimate relationship we have with you. When we rest in the shadow of the Almighty, it means we are under your protection. You hide us in your majesty and strength. You are the only God for us and our great confidence. We trust you as a good father and our protector. Thank you, Jesus, that you rescue us from every hidden trap. You protect us from any deadly curse, and your arms of faithfulness are a shield that keeps us from harm. When we keep our eyes on you, we will never have to worry about an attack from the enemy. Even in a time of disaster like coronavirus, with thousands getting sick and some dying, we will remain unscathed and unharmed. When we actively live our lives within your presence, there is no need to fear anything because no evil will come near us and no disease will infect us. And we are living proof of who you are and what you've provided for us. We are covered by the blood of the Lamb and with this knowledge and assurance, even if the coronavirus touches us, it dies immediately on contact. God, we delight in you and we love you. In your word, you said you greatly protect us as you set us in a high place, safe and secure. You send angels with special orders to protect us wherever we go. This means when we go grocery shopping and take walks, we will not have to worry at all about the virus. Reveal to us all the ways that we can point others to you in this time of chaos. Father God, you partner with us to bring light to the darkness. Thank you for your love and your protection. We will walk in confidence from here on out. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We'll see you next time.